Even the election schedule has raised troubling questions. That the opposition in India seemingly is in disarray. Banned Baja buzz is somehow missing. Expressed in this blog are hosted on my own website, are strictly personal and do not reflect the views of any organization. Namaskar, hello and welcome once again to Straight Bat, my weekly video blog, where as the title suggests, I comment with a straight bat. Now, the 2024 election bugle has been sounded, but the traditional ban baja buzz is somehow missing. Now, this could be partly because a general election is more of a marathon than a sprint. It's spread over two and a half months in excruciating summer heat. But the lack of excitement is more likely because, well, the outcome seems preordained. Never before in recent memory have I known of a general election where there is so much of consensus on the seeming inevitability of the result. Barring, therefore, the most miraculous twist in fortune, Narendra Modi is set to emulate his bet noir, Jawaharlal Nehru, and win three consecutive five-year terms. But while the result may be a foregone conclusion to most, here is the nagging question. Is there really a level playing field in what is meant to be a free and fair democratic battle? Let me repeat that question. Is there really a level playing field in what is meant to be a free and fair democratic battle? Now, there is little doubt that the opposition in India at the moment seemingly is in disarray. The India alliance in particular has been badly fractured, struggling to deal with the numerous contradictions that lie within. Except for Maharashtra and Tamil Nadu and to some extent Uttar Pradesh, there is no major state where the alliance has held firmly together. The original architect of the grouping, Nitish Kumar from Bihar, has earned himself another medal in political gymnastics by switching sides yet again. Mamta Banerjee has gone back to an Ekla Chalo Re mantra. A Bharat Ratna for his grandfather seems to be enough for Jain Chaudhary to have embraced the BJP. Arvind Kejriwal has tied up with the Congress in the national capital, but says he will fight them in every seat in Punjab. Even the left which takes the moral high ground here in Delhi, has no qualms in taking on Rahul Gandhi in Wayanad and the Congress across Kerala. The Congress itself mirrors the state of the rudderless opposition. Rahul Gandhi went, in, went on a yatra at the very moment when perhaps he was needed here to lead the alliance building efforts of his party. And yet, my friends, and this is the critical point, even a bedraggled opposition deserves the benefit of a level playing field at election time. Take the Election Commission, which is legally empowered with conducting the elections in a free and fair manner. A neutral umpire is not just meant to be fiercely non-aligned, but must be seen to be so. Sadly, the constitutional mandated role of this umpire has now come under increasing scrutiny. In 2019, Election Commissioner Ashok Lavasa's dissent note on a series of clean chits given by the Commission to the Prime Minister's allegedly divisive speeches were not even placed on record and he was eventually shunted out from the election body. Now in 2024, the government has effectively negated a Supreme Court order by ensuring its total supremacy in appointing election commissions or commissioners. Thereby, the sense is election commissioners are yes men of the government. Even the election schedule has raised troubling questions. Why, for example, does Maharashtra, with no history of electoral violence, have a five-phase poll? Is it to only allow the Prime Minister as the BJP star Pracharak or crisscross states in every phase? This diminishing credibility, my friends, of the Election Commission reflects a larger institutional corrosion in which official rules of conduct are being tested all the time. 
For example, the centers moved last year to get top officers to spread awareness of the Modi government's achievements as Rath Prabharis during a Viksit Bharat Yatra had sparked off controversy over the unabashed politicization of the bureaucracy in the country. Another order of the Ministry of Defense actually asked soldiers on leave to promote government schemes as soldier ambassadors. In effect, what has happened is that the lines between a ruling political party and the government of the day have been totally blurred. Then turn to the weaponization of central investigating agencies, in particular the Enforcement Directorate that has ensured that opposition leaders ahead of the elections remain on tenterhooks. The repeated summons, for example, to Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal in the alleged Delhi liquor scam and now a fresh Jal Board Enforcement Directorate case are only designed, it seems, to keep the pot boiling. With the Bharat Rashtra Samiti leader K. Kavita also being arrested on the eve of elections in the liquor case, the ED's looming presence has only intensified the sense of disquiet around the opposition. The income tax department has also suddenly become hyperactive. It has gone and frozen the accounts and sought the recovery of more than 100 crores from the Congress over alleged discrepancies in its 2018-19 tax returns. Not just that, the IT department has now gone back and sent notices for even 94-95 when Sitaram Kesri, the late Sitaram Kesri, was the Congress treasurer. These are troubling signs. Moreover, as the details of the electoral bonds have revealed so far, there appears to be a correlation between coercive action taken by agencies and bond donations to the ruling party. It's a quid pro quo that smacks at times of unseemly deal making. As many as 14 of the 30 top donors are companies who have faced investigative action in the period when bonds were purchased, suggesting that the monies might have been paid as protection from prosecution. That more than 50% of these bond monies went to the BJP is less surprising. The party is the dominant party nationally, has used huge access to resources, be it in cash or bonds. But when one party, my friends, has more spending power than all the other parties put together, it does create a financial muscle mismatch that makes the overall campaign very one-sided. Just look at the multimedia blitzkrieg that has been launched by the Modi government and the picture becomes clearer. Which brings me to the media itself, a large section of which appears to have abandoned any pretensions of playing the role of watchdog as journalists are meant to be and demand a measure of accountability from those in power. A survey conducted in April 2019 ahead of the general elections by the Broadcast Audience Research Council or BARC, the premier TV viewership monitoring agency shows that Prime Minister Modi received three times more TV airtime than his political adversaries. Most of it, of course, was suitably adulatory, all the wawagiri. Expect the balance, my friends, to be even more heavily weighted in favor of the frontrunner this time in 2024. Now, it isn't as if Mr. Modi will not win without having this fawning media all gushing over him, or he would lose without the institutional capture of the state. The fact is, Prime Minister Modi is a domineering personality, a larger-than-life figure whose energetic presence and muscular leadership easily connects with vast multitudes across a subcontinental sized country. He's a global Vishwaguru to some, a Hindu priest to others, from delivery oriented administrator to being seen as a nationalist icon. The Aega to Modi hi, only Modi will win. That chant symbolizes 
a political system where all dissenting voices are now being squeezed out. But, and this is important, even in a match where the winner, my friends, is almost certain, the other side deserves at least equal space on the pitch. Denying them that basic opportunity is, to my mind, to do a grave disservice to democracy in this country and raises a big question, will we really have free and fair elections in 2024? As a postscript, a more, more reassuring note was struck during the recent election commissioner's press conference. When asked to respond to the repeated hate speech violations of the model code, the chief election commissioner assured that no matter how renowned a politician is, how big he or she is, action will be taken. So I just want to ask a simple question. As we embark on this big elongated election schedule, will the election commission walk the talk and restore the credibility of the commission and India's commitment to free and fair elections? Think about it. That was the straight bat. Do, of course, subscribe to my YouTube channel for many more such videos. For now, stay well, stay safe. Jai Hind. Namaskar.